No, 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 I don't think you heard me. Are you ready to party? <laughs> no. Gandalf? Gandalf is coming to town? Kathy's with her parents. I have nothing to do, so tomorrow we are partying with Gandalf, dude! Dude, we are so gonna party! <laughs> Kathy's with her parents, and I have nothing to do. So tonight, we're podcasting with Gandalf, dudes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is Friend Spoilers, Season 4, Episode 9, the one where they're going to the party. No. What? It's the one where, it's the one where they're going to party. There's no the in there? No. Is that what I messed up? Because it's... We are so going to party. Well, that's in my notes. I'm deleting it. The one where they're going to party. <laughs> so we started doing this thing, the Kathy Chronicles, right, Brett? Because we're paying tribute to Matthew Perry, who unfortunately oh, passed away. Too soon. We're just a little over halfway. I think we decided that there's eight episodes in the, in the Kathy Chronicles, starting with season four, episode four, going through episode 12. Joe's new girlfriend, five, six. Seven, eight, yeah, and then two. She's in six, though, right? I don't know. Yeah, so we're in the mid- we're in this like kind of awkward midpoint where she's not really part of the plot or episodes, but we've been just liking doing these friends episodes a lot. And frankly, mm-hmm. uh, Stevie backed out of hosting tonight, right, Pap? Mm-hmm. What happened? So, mm-hmm. uh, you said you had to do some work stuff. Um, I think you had to write some performance reviews, but. Good excuse to do some Kathy Chronicles. Fire it back up. Kathy Chronicles minus Kathy. He seems really nervous to host Leon the Professional, which is the movie he's gearing towards. So I don't like. Does that is that part of it? <laughs> he wa- he said that he wanted you to co-host with him at some I point. Know, it's so weird. You were very anti. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So. What's going on with all that? I don't know. Do we have to ask Stevie next week? Maybe. All right, guys. I do have an opening question. In spoilers forum, we'll have an opening question. We'll spoil the plot, and we'll talk about all the plot and characters. And then we'll get to, like, a quick final thoughts, yes or no's, and trivia at the very, very end. But And a grade. Yeah, we do a grade for the Friends thing. Mm-hmm. This part the, we'll, we'll tie that into the yes or no's. But let's get started with an opening question. I got one for you guys. What's something that made you feel old recently? Obviously, in this episode, um, the guys think they want to party, and it turns out they'd rather just kind of sip on decaf coffee after all. I'll go first, give you guys a little bit of time to think about it. Um, What's made me feel old recently? Well, I started noticing when I was picking up a couple pots and pans with my left hand recently, like my wrist was hurting. And I like really zeroed in on it and I realized it was hurting like right in the spot where I had broken it when I was 16 and like high school basketball. And (laughs) it's like, that's weird, but maybe I just kind of twisted it sleeping on it the other night. But then I was talking to my mom the other day and I was like, yeah, I kind of got this thing. And she just looked at me almost like excitedly with a smile on her face and was like, arthritis. Oh, yeah. I was like, (laughs) what the fuck? (laughs) I don't know. I guess maybe my wrist can tell me when it's about to rain. So maybe it's a superpower, but I don't know. I, I used to I used to be able to tell you when it had rain with my it's knee. It's crazy. It's like, a, I don't know. I was picking up a cast iron skillet with my left hand the other day, which can be kind of heavy. And it just like yeah, really tugged at it. And I guess I'm a grandpa. Got arthritis. That's mine. What you got for us, Pat? Uh, Pappy, recording from Goshen. I don't know, man. My body is also breaking down. I got a giant <laughs> ass bald spot. It gets bigger every time I see two mirrors perfectly aligned. That's frankly concerning. Um, I can like barely drink alcohol anymore. Like if I have like two beers, I'm not gonna feel normal for like 
a day. <laughs> I feel so bad. Um, gray hairs, and I bought a water pick off Amazon today. So I'm. Yes. I didn't think being a pappy would actually be like being a pappy. You know, it's kind. Of, <laughs> it's not as fun as I thought it would be. So sorry, Brett. I was still yeah, just it, stunned from that extremely vulnerable and honest answer. Damn, Pap. All right, go. Sorry, I just, Brett. I see death looming. <laughs> just... Guys, yeah, first of all, let me start by saying I don't want to freaking hear it. Like, this is like this is unanswerable for me because I'm so I'm, I'll be forty in nineteen days. I'm so unbelievably out of shape. Everything I do hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's my actually if i could go with a funny one i think about a year ago um we were i was getting ready to get in bed and i get up to pull the string like the cord for the the light and you know like you do that little fire hose dance like where you curl your right hand and it goes through your body it comes out the left you guys know what i'm talking about what's that called wait you do what it's like someone hits your hand and it, it like Oh my god! I'm doing it with my. You like curl your arm and it like goes through your body. And you, oh. you curl your arm and, and it goes through your. You're body? You're doing like the wave with your body, kind of. Yeah, not a wave, not the wave. I mean, yeah, but trust me, you've seen it a thousand times. But somebody knows what I'm talking about. I'm sure there's a name for it. But my story doesn't really work if you don't know the dance. Um, it's like a smooth shoulder yeah. dance. I feel like uh, uh, Brother Jordan does something similar to that a lot. I f- oh, like your arms are the waves? Uh, yeah, like, they're the waves. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, Josh, when you say the wave, but yes, that's what I'm talking about. And you can, I don't know, edit that out or leave it, whatever. Everyone loves it. <laughs> but I was looking at Brittany, and I did the right arm, started it, came through, and I was going to do the left wave up to the light thing and no joke I hurt my back and it hurt me for like three weeks <laughs> just reaching no it's okay I it was something we laugh about now but like one little dance move and I reached up and I threw my back out like almost it, I like pulled something in my back and I'm just like oh cool this is gonna be really fun My work buddies, Kevin and Jane, Kevin is a little older and he was, he kind of like used to skate and used to do tricks and Jane's like younger and is kind of starting to try to do tricks. And he was just when they were they were at their desk and Kevin was just kind of showing her with his feet, just like the motions of like what one of the moves are in slow motion, <laughs> like throughout his back. <laughs> Just like slowly moving his <laughs> arm, like legs oh, in like a it. kick flip motion, and he's like, <laughs> "I was fake skating and got hurt for three days." <laughs> that is something that would happen to me. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin, putting you on blast out here. Well, thank you guys for the opening question. I feel like every once in a while we have a doozy of a question, and that was one of them. So proud. <laughs> I got a question real quick. Mm. How many better director names are there than the person who directed this episode, who is Peter Boners? Peter Boners? With a Z. I'm not going to lie. That's actually pretty cool. That's got to be fake then, right? Completely fake name? Who is this guy? Well, I'm sure he probably pronounces Boners. Boners. It's Boners with a Z. (laughs) He could say that all he wants. It's Boners. But go ahead. Yeah, we get into this episode of Friends with a classic cold intro. We're out in the street, I believe, here. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brett, but um, yeah, outside Friends and Monica and Phoebe have just purchased a van. Yeah, I know that girl. Pappy, what's, what's the van like? Did you like the mural? Uh, so we've been playing... Some video games recently, Josh, and your 
car character is a van that looks very similar to this in Rocket League. Weirdly, I, it has a wizard on it. Is that Gandalf? Yeah. Gandalf, <laughs> <Actually>. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's Can pretty we take sick. a breakdown, actually? If you're going to talk about yeah. Rocket League. Sure. I just want to mention we've been playing as like our, what is it called? Your squad? Your, your uh, Team? Clan? Yeah, you have like a little clan name and you go in and like type it in with the Xbox controller. But we are always spoilers podcast. So we're really marketing the podcast just by playing rocket league for like an hour and a half every night nice so if you found us through that guerrilla marketing campaign that we're doing on the epic servers welcome this holy is, shit this is the podcast were you on with was it you or josh that was on with me where a guy was like wait what is your podcast name for real and then we beat him by one and he's like dope man i'll have to check this out tomorrow oh so, no i wasn't on that's maybe cool. we, we maybe we did get one listener maybe you're out there but welcome yeah. Anyway, sorry the va- the van. What's what's the mural on the van and friends? It's a it's a lady that looks like uh, she would be painted on the siding of like a carnival ride. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, her bags light up. She's got a little nipple light. She's riding a snake, I think, too. Right, and she's got a giant sword in her hand. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty sweet pickup. Right. I mean. The after the MSRP aftermarket on this bad boy is probably not cheap an investment. I feel I, like hipsters really imagine if it with a waterbed. Ooh, yeah, waterbeds aren't cheap either. Uh, hipsters definitely have been bringing back the van and conversion vans. It probably would go for pretty. It's got to have good market value in 2024. I just can't imagine the state of a waterbed that's been. <laughs> included with the purchase of a van like that thing. <laughs> oh yeah no yeah you don't want that <laughs> that's a bug not a feature <laughs> what do you want to show us because all i can see is this bitchin van <laughs> yeah it's for our catering business oh, i think i know that girl <laughs> well they they buy this van for their new catering business and that's all well and good but this takes us into the intro song and as per usual i'm just I wondering did you guys skip brett skipped i skipped Pappy? i skipped no i watched it's been months since he's done one of these I yes of course he the did whole thing. Mm-hmm. brings you back up to date it gets you in the mood mm-hmm. all right well for this episode of spoilers instead of trying to go straight front to back i was thinking we could go character by character there's three main plots the first character i think we should cover we already talked about a little bit she just bought the van it's monica not only has she bought a van but her career really seems to be taking off right guys she's got a part-time gig as like a critic now what's this all about yeah so was it her friend or something hooked her up with a temporary she's filling in for somebody a restaurant critic for some really, uh, they make two references to their newspaper. One, Phoebe has a pretty funny line. She said, oh, those used to keep me so warm yeah. because she was homeless. And Ross said, oh, you'll get to reach dozens of people. So we know it's not much of a, a thing, which kind of makes the Alessandro stuff even funnier that he like looked in there. But so she's a critic. Yeah, I don't know how far are we going. I mean, she, she went to do Alessandro's restaurant. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite minor characters in Friends history, I think one of the funniest is is the guy who is Alessandro. I think he's so unbelievably funny. My friend Gray used to always be like, "It's Alessandro from Alessandros." Like, <laughs> what is this guy from? Is he? Do I just know him through Friends Osmosis? Like he this? No, no, no. He's in stuff, uh, but he also rest in peace. He passed away in 2015. Um, sadly, too soon. Yeah, but what else has he been in? I'm look. I'm stalling while I look him up. Okay. His name is Taylor. I had it written down. Taylor Negron. That's as much of that as I'm gonna say. He's in Biodome. Oh. Did you guys have any sort of like? Did this hit home for you? This plot point in particular, because part of being part of this movie podcast, I guess we're movie critics. Oh. Would you like it if one of the people's whose movie we like kind of ripped on? 
called us out and was telling us like his livelihoods on the line and like isn't that kind of what's happened to us if Bring alexander it. cooper shows up at my house dude i'm i'm calling the cops you're not gonna <laughs> let him in and have a nice little discussion by yourself i'm calling interpol like we gotta take care of this this is an international incident brewing he's i mean he's in a, a i mean He's in Stuart Little. No, I know him from Angels in the Outfield. He's the uh, uh, reporter. Yeah, he's like the little assistant guy who's like he buys him snacks. I think at one point. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, he's in so many like one-offs. Like he had a pretty nice run. Brett, mm-hmm. let's keep going with the Monica thing here because not only does he rip on her, but she starts showing him like the correct way to do some things in the kitchen, and he offers her. Yep the head chef job for his restaurant, like kind of on the spot. And that's an interesting plot point. And I don't know, weirdly something I've always remembered in friends like that, that happened to her, but moving on from that, can you kind of explain a little bit the tension between her and Phoebe that this causes? Yeah. And actually when I was watching it, I was like, and even when you brought it up earlier about, it's like, I feel like everyone everyone knows this. Like you make a commitment mm-hmm. with somebody else, like a close friend, and then a close friend maybe brings another close friend, maybe brings something to your attention that's maybe better or just different. And it's just like, crap, I really want to do this, but I promised. So Phoebe and Monica, I think if you listen to our um, old Kathy Chronicles episodes, they, they're starting a, they started a catering business. That's what the band was for. And they've already had a job. And now Phoebe had booked another job. So Monica's like, I really want this job. But Phoebe gets really upset. What's worse too is like when Monica takes the critics job, she's all like, oh, don't worry. This won't impact the catering business. You know what I mean? So it kind of like sets the stage for that. But it's like she just assured her that she wasn't going to bail on the catering business. And she had a total dick move by Monica. It's tough. That's a tough situation, though. That's what she's wanted forever. You really think it's a dick move, Pappy? I she, think she have, so. I she think should I, have turned down the head chef job, like, or talked to Phoebe first, is what you're implying, or what should have been her correct course of action? I think she just got to get on that hustler grind set and work two jobs. She can do it. <laughs> uh, have you ever seen how many hours no. uh, a head chef? Works. They call yeah, that no the way. crying set. It's not the grind set anymore. <laughs> it's the crying set. Just wanted you yeah. to know. Josh, Josh, I've always, part of me has always felt like, I think the dick move was, would have been Phoebe. Explain. And, and it's unfair to say that, really. But, I mean, they're both, they both become selfish at one point. I don't know. It's hard to say Phoebe was selfish. But, like, Phoebe doesn't have a job. Right, like this was going to be her livelihood, but she also doesn't have a passion for this career field. So her just to have a job seems like she could. She doesn't care if it's this job or like feeding birds down at the park. But Monica has a chance to like kind of climb the ladder here. Right, this is her like her dream in New York City. She's always wanted since she was a little girl. She's wanted to run a kitchen. Uh, I mean, it's it's unfair for Phoebe for sure, but like Phoebe didn't need that. She obviously has money. She saved money. I don't know. I I would have felt like if she would have made her work there. I don't know. I think she would have felt really guilty. Wow. <laughs> you really wanted me to do something with this van. <laughs> you know what? I want you to take the chef job. Really. Yeah, that's what you really want. Yeah, I don't want to be the reason you're unhappy. That would just make me unhappy. And I really don't want to be the reason I'm unhappy. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Besides, it might be kind of fun to form the new (laughs) A-team. Pappy, if I got a job offer from... Soledad O'Brien to help out oh. with the uh, Who Killed JFK pod. You want me to take I'd, that? If I have to, of take course it I'd want you hiatus? to take it. Of course I'd want you to take it. If I had, except I hate <laughs> that whole situation now. But 
we're gonna tease that out for later. <laughs> no, I think Phoebe does the right thing. To be clear, it's yeah, just I like do. if if I was gonna start a business with someone, you can't just give up after two weeks. Yeah. Like I don't, yeah. you gotta see it through to some extent. I don't know. Yeah, I thought Monica was pretty funny when she's like, "I don't even think you'd need me." She's like, "You're the cook." That's pretty funny, <laughs> or chef or whatever. But yeah, I was. This is a kind of plot line that I think could potentially be played over the course of a whole season. And I think there's some really good writing here on the couch in the coffee shop, Pappy. But it's like, did you notice this too? The scene with the notebook and they both kind of like change their minds and soften multiple times in one scene. Did you pick up on that? Yeah, a little bit. And Phoebe is initially excited when Monica's like, I'm going to stick it out with you. And it lets them kind of both do a nice thing for each other. Monica was willing to go there. I, I was curious about, like, there's just so many jobs on those pieces of paper. I don't know how, like, how many jobs you could really do with that van. I mean, I think Phoebe would be a great Uber driver, right? Like, she's, yeah. she's funny. You pick you up. First of all. In that van, too, it'd be a whole scene. She'd be a hit. Five stars. Phoebe used to work on the streets. I mean, a van is a valuable asset. Mm-hmm. She should recognize. <laughs> and a waterbed. Like, it's just a bonus. I don't know, Brett. I, that scene really stuck out at, to me as maybe one of the strongest in this episode, just because it was like Monica went in with like a clear motivation and like backs down. It'd usually be like end scene there. But then the whole thing like kind of turns around and goes the other way. And it's all pretty jam packed in this like, I don't know, a 90 second scene. Yeah, it's good. I liked it. It's good. It's real good. What's also weird about that scene, and I forgot to bring it up, um, but it it does stick out with the sort of thumb to me. When you sh- when you see Monica, there's a Red Bull can like over her head. I don't think it's product placement because it's kind of out of focus or sorry when you see phoebe i think you see the red bull can but i don't know it's just i don't associate the red bull can like unchanged in its branding since like 1990 whatever this would be eight or something did you guys notice the red bull at all am i crazy yeah i didn't see it but i'm sure it's there how could it not be product placement it's not like it's a real coffee shop maybe it is i don't know every product there is placed i would argue but Hmm. Brett, let's get to our second character. There's three kind of characters we're going to follow through this episode. But number two, and she may lead to the trivia at the end of the episode. Hint, hint. But Mm. the second character is Rachel. Yeah. Maybe just set the scene a little bit. She's looking towards a promotion at her job in fashion that i don't really understand i've never understood it so maybe yeah nobody nobody knows fill in some of the blanks here maybe for us brett oh uh joanna i was wondering if i could ask you something there's an opening for an assistant buyer in junior miss okay but that would actually be a big step down for me no actually i meant for me the hiring committee is meeting people all day oh well i wish i could say no but i guess you can't stay my assistant forever (sighs) Neither can you, Sophie, but for different reasons. <laughs> okay. Rachel works at Bloomingdale's. She's an assistant to uh, Joanne, who's kind of a psycho. Hose beast. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Um, she's mean. And it's the department store. A real life department yeah. store. Bloomingdale's. Yeah, Bloomingdale's. Yep. Is it like Kohl's or something? <laughs> I don't I just, know fashion at all. So many people probably just cringe. Bloomingdale's is a thing. People also people also search for Nordstrom, Macy's. Okay, sort of getting a. What's the one? What's the one? Fifth Avenue, Von Mar, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street, Mace, Macy's. Uh, we have a we have a Von Mar. Yeah. Is it Macy's? Hmm. Um, it's basically like Concord Mall, J.C. Penney. They'll just leave it at that. <laughs> the highest end. I drove by Copper Mall on the weekend. And I was like, man, those were the days. <laughs> I just miss malls, you know? Oh, yeah. What's the boss's name? What'd you say? Joanne? Joanne. 
She's more than just a little psycho. Unhinged. <laughs> she is insane. Yeah, <laughs> she has a pretty funny relationship with Chandler, of all people, in season three or whatever. But so there's a promotion that there's a job opening that Rachel wants for a junior buyer. She wants to apply for it and she gets Joanne's blessing, uh, I guess you could say. And she said, oh, I'm actually on the committee, which I was talking to Brittany. I, I feel like you would be well within your rights to get Joanne refused from that conflict of interest because apparently she's just being awful. I can't imagine they'd ever let that happen, but whatever. So she actually goes into her interview and the other two people are really impressed. And every time they're impressed, Joanne's like totally torpedoes her. Like, oh, you're great at getting bagels mm-hmm. or you get my coffee and basically accused her of sleeping around, which is not true. Um, and just completely torpedoes her. So Rachel is like, I, I'm going to quit. I, I mean, how can I work for you after what you said to me? And Joanne doesn't want her to quit. Admits that she sabotaged her because she didn't want to lose an assistant. assistant buyer. Can I butt in here a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, so like as much as we said, we don't really know what Bloomingdale's is as like a guy from the Midwest. I have like no fucking clue. Right. And so for as little as like, I know even what that job is or what skills you need to like succeed at it. Rachel is like very competent despite her boss being batshit crazy. I do think it's a natural yeah. inclination for like bosses to like <laughs> Pappy, maybe fill me, fill, fill us in here. But like, if you're going to apply for another job, you're currently employed. You're going to apply for another job. Do you put your current boss as like a reference? No, fuck no, you don't. Uh, in, in no circumstances. I feel like a good boss is someone you should be looking to f- as a reference and even for career advice. So mm-hmm. like for you to say no, that you wouldn't use them as a, it's a little disturbing. I don't, I don't know, but clearly, yeah. clearly Jennifer you Aniston your boss. wouldn't want to use Joanne as a reference. Yeah. You don't want your boss to know, even if they like would say good things about it, you don't want your boss to know that you're, looking for other jobs well i've at least that's my opinion i've twice in my career like applied internally to other roles um and my boss was never on the hiring committee but whenever you do <laughs> that they get notified so i've always like brought that up ahead of time because like i don't want you to find out through a fucking hr automated email that i applied to a yeah, job that's true but i've always and- had good bosses they're always like yeah you know let your wings soar pappy Go out and succeed. You know, that's what a good boss should do. Should, yeah. Joanne's not a good boss. A good boss, if you're reporting to your boss, there's kind of an unsaid thing where, like, they are essentially your next step as a career move, but they're there, right? So there's always kind of that underlying tension. And I feel like if you have a good relationship, there should be some open communication that, like, if a similar job to that is open somewhere else, you've been training under them. They have trained you well. You like each other. You wish each other the best. Like, might be inconvenient for them for a while to train someone else, but shouldn't they be generally happy for you for an upward career move? At a very minimum, they shouldn't accuse you of being a binge drinker. What did she <laughs> say? Like, he enjoys a vacational a- drink. Ing binge, Ing binge on a weekday. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wasn't that Mr. Lipton or something from Seinfeld? The middle guy? Oh, yeah. Was it? Mr. Lipton? Yeah. Lipton doesn't seem right. That's a type of tea. I don't know. Maybe you could research that, Brett. I am already on it. Nice. Richard Fancy. Richard Fancy. Richard Fancy. That's a good name. It's- Lipman. It's close. Besides for her boss being problematic her boss her boss yeah. tanking her and then her boss giving her a promotion i don't know are there any funny moments in here pappy that were memorable with this little side plot the least important of the three side plot of the three plots i must say yeah and i was probably like i don't know vibing with it 
the least. I would say even just some of the extent of the joke with like you said she was probably problematic. Like she's unhinged. She's talking about how she slept with people. I'm like, oh, it's kind of sad actually to get to where she is and. Then she wants to like sleep with Jennifer Aniston at the end of yeah, the scene. Yeah, she's so so many laws and workplace violations that she makes mm-hmm. in this episode. Yeah, I also like the who's the other secretary, the one who sucks, Sophie. Sophie, that useless one. Yeah, there's one point where she calls Sophie in the office to be like, "See, you are making a scene," <laughs> like in front of Sophie. Yeah, that was pretty good too. I read something on IMDb that I'm ashamed to think that I never, I'm ashamed that I never, it never even crossed my mind, but apparently there's a theory online that Sophie pushed Joanne into, into traffic. Oh, damn. <laughs> I like that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that could definitely have happened. That's why she knows about it. That's why she's happy about it. Well, she's happy about it because, you know, Joanne was like so mean to her. Sophie's like that job's open for me now, which I, I don't know. That was pretty surprising, because um, like I, I'm the least versed in friends of this group, and I, I just didn't know that like people died like that. It almost like a Seinfeld. That bit, did feel you know? Seinfeldy. You didn't, you didn't know that people died getting hit by cars. No, in the show Friends, just like that there would be this character, and I didn't even know she was on for multiple seasons, and then they just die. Like I said, it felt very Seinfeld. Yeah, that's true. I wonder, did anybody else die on this show? I mean, their their Nana does. But Another thing that struck me about this plot is like Rachel's exuberance about her promotion and her career. Because it doesn't, she's so pumped to be an assistant buyer, even at the expense of like the fact that like her friends are kind of pissed off at each other or her boss just died. Or that Sophie's getting walked over. She's a little selfish here. And they play it for jokes, but if we're looking at it straight down the middle, it's not a great look for Rachel sometimes. It is funny how it's like, I, I feel like that's a thing with really light sitcoms, is that the characters' careers tend to like take off. You know what I mean? I'm thinking of like How I Met Your Mother. I feel like that happens a little bit. Like You want to see people be successful and have cool jobs like the people you've become attached to right and it works really well with like monica too do you know like both of their career paths are going up in the same episode well i mean how else do you think they can afford a nine thousand dollar a month oh boy (laughs) yeah (laughs) good point that might even cost more than nine thousand that's that's in freaking manhattan i think and Please, for New York standards, it might as well be a mansion. Now, I know it's rent controlled. That's the whole inside joke that they bring out. It's they subletted it from their grandma. But well, you know what else is nine thousand dollars a month? Mm. All the Patreon support that spoilers podcasts get. Not even Ooh. close. No, God, I wish. Yeah. If we had nine thousand dollars a month and I'm not getting money, I'm quit. <laughs> if you would like to join our Patreon, please, yes, Patreon backslash spoilers podcast podcast spoilers something like that you'll spoilers find us podcast <laughs> maybe even maybe even episode 10 will be uh, patreon only maybe yeah sure <laughs> i mean no 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 no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> don't you worry i'm sure with your qualifications you won't need to sleep with some guy to oh. get the job <laughs> <laughs> although uh, i might need some convincing <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> kidding Wild <laughs> Let's get to our third plot. Our last plot line. Is it Ross? Is it Phoebe? Is it Chandler? This is an ode to Chandler after all. No. The third character, the third plot line is all about Gandalf. <laughs> the party man. <laughs> Are you guys ready to party? We are so gonna party. I don't think you understood me, Pappy. Are you ready to party? No. So ready to party. I don't remember what he said. <laughs> uh, one of the funniest lines I think in Friends and So Joey is Gandalf, the wizard. Didn't you read Lord of the Rings in high school? No, I had sex in high school. Yeah, that's been a that meme. Is- I've seen that before around. 
Pappy, why don't you talk a little bit about, uh, you probably haven't seen this episode or talked about it, in spe- this plot line specifically as much as me and Brett and best friend Drew, but maybe mm-hmm. if a listener hasn't listened, maybe if a listener hasn't watched this episode of Friends, who's Gandalf, who's pumped, and maybe even tease us a little bit of who's a little disappointed about this whole thing. Yeah, so I can only assume that Gandalf is like a big Coke guy and like hooks the group up. (laughs) Uh, I never thought of that in my entire life, Pat, but... (laughs) You're always talking about how they have so much energy with Gandalf and they stay up all night whenever they hang out and they're always super friendly. Gandalf is the (laughs) Van Wilder-esque never seen on screen, as far as I know, I guess, friend of um, Chandler and Ross. And they go way back. They've had a lot of crazy times with Gandalf. Um, Joey's never met Gandalf. And he feels a little bit sad and put out that, that his place is almost being supplanted by like the most fun human being on Earth, apparently. It is kind of like Joey is like the cool guy of their little clique. Yeah, he's the fun guy. So even off screen, Gandalf is threatening him a little bit. Some wizard guy. I don't know. That's kind of relatable. I like that little plot point. That's all I was going to say. One time, I don't know, within the last five or six years, I hadn't been home in a while. And I was going home to hang out with everybody. I think I was going to best friend Drew's house and hang out with everybody. And I remember Drew texting me. and He's like, this weekend we are so going to party. like <laughs> Because that's like in our lexicon. And uh, we partied. Probably not with Canadian money or seals or whatever, but... I think, okay, you brought it up, Josh. I mean, obviously you brought it up for a reason. We can't, I was, we used to, like 10 years ago, I, even in my like late 20s, I remember like probably the last time that I like felt young drinking. I think we went to Purdue. <laughs> and I don't remember if I was 21 or 23, but I was like sick as a dog, but we still drank like four or five days in a row. And five years later, I was like, how was that even possible that I could do that? Because I can't drink more than one day in a row now. I mean, yeah, we all we all get old, and like they're like, oh, we're twenty nine, but I'm like, yeah, twenty nine is in twenty one. They're both in the twenties. You're but in your prime still. I don't know, twenty nine. This. Yeah, I mean, I guess it is different though. Twenty one is is definitely. You, I had a lot more energy, but twenty nine is not too bad. Yeah, but we weren't doing coke. I don't think Ross and Chandler were either, but hey. They're not Coke know. guys, but Gandalf is. And that dude Gandalf is definitely the, the white. <laughs> I'm yeah. starting to pull oh. down what you're throwing down, Pep. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a $9,000 a month Coke habit. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like one of the wolves on Wall Street. So he's like fucking fine. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is fun to see like the pre-cell phone stuff too when Joey's leaving he's like where do you guys think like, you'll where be where are you gonna be yeah, yeah. And it's like oh yeah that's what you used to have to do like approximate hey okay I got my passport fresh socks and a snake bite kit it's not gonna be exactly like last time <laughs> alright I'll see you guys whoa whoa whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I have an audition but I'll definitely hook up with you later where are you gonna be around noon Somewhere maybe along the equator. (laughs) Okay. Hello. It's Gandalf. So presumably the three guys, even without Gandalf, they're out partying in New York for a little while. They took the day off after all. So they're out there drinking, probably playing some pool or pickleball or some shit. (laughs) And they're like, you know what? Let's go back to the central perk to just like refuel a little bit. What actually happens then there, Brett? Yeah, so they come in. Joey's got a plan. He's like, hey, I'm going to get some coffee. And then we're going to head back out and go here, here. And they all just kind of lug around on the couch. And uh, Ross is like, I don't know. I'm kind of beat, man. And Chandler's like, yeah, me too. And Joey's like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. He's like, Thank God I'm exhausted. So then, then Gunther comes around 
rest in peace. Um, too many dead people in this episode. Don't like it. Um, and Joey orders a coffee, but decaf. And Ross orders a decaf. And then Chandler <laughs> orders a hot water with lemon because <laughs> he had to talk so loud in that really loud club. And it, it's the whole like, do they have to have it that loud? And I couldn't hear. I mean, like, completely like get off my lawn type. I'm totally like botching the line and I'll probably play it in post, but someone's like, and I want to sit in a comfortable chair and watch television and go to sleep at a reasonable hour. Yeah. Yeah. And I like to hang out in a quiet place where I could talk to my friends. Yeah. Yeah. And so what if I like to go home, throw on some Kenny G and take a bath? (laughs) We're 29. We're not women. But Joey's retort to them is, we're 29 years old. We're not women. It's like... Yeah, no, he goes... Take a bath and put He goes, just because I want to take a bath and put... He goes, we're 29. We're not women. Wait, what does he want to do? He wants to take a bath and listen to some Alanis Morissette or something? What is it? Kenny G. Kenny oh, G. Kenny G. Okay. Yeah, because Alanis Morissette is actually super cool. Right. Well, I mean, that still sounds pretty nice. Kenny G in a bath? I can fuck with that. <laughs> You're women, Pat. <laughs> Listen, if it's between that and getting my face looked by a seal, I would definitely yeah. take a bath in Kenny G. I'm old. Yeah. Well, are you guys ready for final thoughts? Well, it's too bad. Because there's an outro to Friends. Love it, too. It's really funny. We we don't have to linger here, but Pap, Monica, Monica is now the head chef at this Italian restaurant, right? Alessandro's. Alessandro's. Mm-hmm. And what she didn't know is that Alessandro's is basically run by the Corleone family in the back. <laughs> 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 and... She just fired the Don, or he just fired the Don, and he's taken over. But yeah, no, it's really funny. They're just all mean mucking her, and she's reading this like little motivational quip that she wrote. It, it's pretty good. I love when she's reading, and she looks up and looks, and the camera goes to the people, and they are like giving her the most murderous gaze. Yeah. I think it's so funny. I'm so excited about having Monica come on board with us. Although I do feel bad about having fired Chef Emilio. It is like losing a member of the family. Of course, that literally is the case for several of you. (laughs) Tony, Carlos, Marie, please tell your father how much we're going to miss him. Hey, Alessandro or Sal or whatever his name was. Sal, I don't know, the dad. He should have been a better cook. I said it. He was terrible, apparently. The waiter shouldn't carry the breadsticks in their pants. Like, I mean, that can't be helping his cause either. It's really funny because he goes, you know, he was like a member of our family. And for some of you out there, he was literal family. He was your dad. Or He's literally your father <laughs> to like four of the people. I don't know. It, it, it's so it's actually like weirdly funny for an outro. It's kind of what I'm getting at here, Brett. Like, I, I think it's great. I don't know. I agree. They almost like made a mistake. This should have been like a whole bit, a whole like episode well, probably, but I don't know. You no, know, there is coming up. There's a whole episode with, with Dragon. Uh, Joey goes by Dragon because he works at the restaurant. It's good. So we're going to get some of He's that. He's got to go on the inside, Brett. <laughs> yeah, because he wants to. She's not that. Yeah, no one's listening to her. So she wants to fight, bring him in to fire him. Mm-hmm. But he's making too many good tips. <laughs> Classic, classic. It joke. pays so much more than his acting job, Pappy. You don't even realize. But <laughs> let's get into final thoughts here, really quick. I just have one, so I'll get it over with now, and then sh- shoot it over to you guys. But this episode actually seemed ridiculously short. Like it did. It seemed like half an episode when I watched it. That's it. That's my final thought. It just seemed truncated. Have you, and have you been watching like any? Uh... 30 minute episodes like uh, binging any shows because when you watch those and they're actually 30 minutes without commercials when you go watch a 19 to 21 minute like 
NBC broadcast, it seems like a short, like a, a little, like a couple commercials. It's, it's crazy mm. how different the length seems. I've been watching Tacoma FD, and every episode's like 24, 25, 26 minutes. And it just seems so much longer than what we just watched. All these episodes I've been on, they just go down so easy. Like, oh, yeah. It's, I don't know, very easy to watch. Like, I can't even finish a whole meal in an episode. <laughs> I got a final thought, Josh. I don't, I, you know, I, I, I love Ross and everything. I feel like, I don't know if he did it on purpose or not, but he says he's the funnest guy. It doesn't sound like, is it Ross to say a word that's not a real word? That's so like not like him, you know, he's the English guy. And funnest is not a word, so at least not a real word. I agree, but can I touche a little bit? I feel like yeah, this episode is pretty clear that when he starts thinking of Gandalf, he reverts to like a more yeah. immature self. <laughs> yeah. There's Reverti- one point. Revertigo. There's one point where Chandler is like, Gandalf's coming. I'm going to call in and call off sick tomorrow. And me too. And Ross. I'm going to use a phone after you. Yeah, Ross like pops up <laughs> beside him. He's like, I- I'm gonna call after you. <laughs> just, like, just, just literally a little That's kid true. saying "me too." So, hashtag that Ross can get not hashtag me too. Right? Not hashtag. Oh, sorry. But that, just it's just a habit. Just a habit. That sorry. Ross can get away with saying funnest, whereas like museum Ross has to say most fun. I think. <laughs> Whom? I don't know why I do that, but it is correct. Um, <laughs> Whom is the most I will, fun? You know what? You gave me... Yeah, Joey, that's a good one. You, gave, you know what? You ended it for me. That's, a good, that's as good an explanation as I needed. I will never worry about that again. Thanks, Brett. That actually... I feel like Thank that's a you. high compliment as a friend. It I is. know you. I, it is, because mm-hmm. I, I worry about... I worry about... That, that, that's something I... I don't worry about it, and it's not like... But it's like... I'm always thinking about it, but it's gone now. You solved it. There's a reason in the writer's room. You got to believe in them. It is. Yeah. Pap, any last second thoughts here? Um, Clothes look good again. Drip. I, I, I think Matthew Perry looks awesome. I love <laughs> like his little sweater thing that he's wearing. And uh, uh, there's one scene, too, where they're after Gandalf cancels on him, and they're just sitting around the house. I think uh, Ross had balanced his checkbook or something, but like Joey just like bursts into the apartment. <laughs> I don't know. It really made me laugh. Like it's like a little detail, but his physical comedy is so good. Um, that's, that's about it for me though. Let's do these yes or no's. You ready for it? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And grade. Yeah. Brett, yep. do you want to go first and show us how to do this? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't remember like my other grades, but there were some high episodes um, yeah, this is a yes. I mean, it, it's not really going to be any that are no's, um, to be honest with you, because I really love this show. And I've seen, there's ones that I don't like as much, but this should be a short episode because it's not one of the finest episodes of Friends. And I, I still agree with that. But you brought up a couple times tonight, Josh, probably at least three of the times where you brought up that you liked the script and how it was written. And I agreed with all three of that. So I'm going to give it a little bump. I was thinking maybe like a C minus, but it, well, Maybe a C. A little Gandalf the White bump. Mm. I love that storyline. <laughs> oh, a little bump. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pat, what you got, buddy? Okay. I'll, yeah, yes. All of these have been, like, really pleasant to watch and are really fast yeah. and go down easy. I'm, I'm kind of with you, though, Brett. Like, if I think about, like, the actual scale of like how good TV can be, you know, this is probably more like a C minus, but it doesn't mean it's yeah. bad. You know, like I'm right there with you. I wouldn't go any D grade, but like, yeah, this is probably of the ones we've watched. This is like very mid 
for me, you know, maybe like yeah. towards the bottom, which isn't again, not bad, but just not as good as some of the other things we've seen. But yeah, yeah yes. Agreed. We need more Kathy. Got to bring back that storyline. What's your like letter grade? C minus. C. Wow. Plus we have the most famous friends episode kind of too. So, Jeez. and she's not in that, but it's going to be so fun. Tough rankings from my bros, Pap and Brett. In the C's, I'll, I'll give this a B. There's a little shallowness maybe to the episode. There's no like uh, Ross and Rachel subplot, right, Brett, that we like to see in the yeah. deepest of Friends episodes. But something about the way that Keep in mind, this is like pre Lord of the Rings movies coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something about hearing Gandalf is coming to town and the party aspect and them getting so excited, but then the realism of just like partying is fun, but we got to really like pick our spots now. It's very relatable to some Midwestern dudes myself so i will i will raise this to b like you said pappy these episodes go down nice i don't know it's crazy how fast some of these episodes go by and that's a testament to their quality i think but that's my b that's my yes that's my questioning your guys as a c i guess like in your mind we're these are letter grades against other friends episodes, not against like right, right. That's TV yeah. in general. I don't I know. I just considered it like of all against all media. Like I don't know. That's fine. It, would there ever be like an F Friends episode for you, Pat? Well, or Brett. I mean, yeah. We. I mean, yeah. Uh, clip shows. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> freaking hate those. Although but, I might like, love that's it what, if I haven't seen that. all. Of them, oh yeah, it's true. I don't know if we have one. I mean, there's multiples throughout the whole thing. So just like watching the theme song on loop, but, but mm. are you guys ready for trivia? I had a lot of fun with you guys tonight. Thanks for reviewing this episode of friends. These are like fun, like little episodes. I hope people don't hate them. I know cheese zombie like fucking hates friends. And there's some people <laughs> out there that have like no patience for this, but I don't, well, know. don't listen. And we got our boy, our boy J Dub loves the episodes. He's been giving us, he's been dying without them. And we got something for the hardcore Kino heads too coming out. It's for you, Jordan. It's for you, Jordan. Guess what else? Best friend Drew wants to be on a friend episode. We have Ooh, to make that good. happen. Yeah, but I want to be there. I don't know how to make it happen, but we got to make that happen. Maybe that could be a Patreon thing. We're always looking for Patreon things to do, but I digress. Pappy, Brett, Mm. are you ready for some trivia? Oh, yeah. Ready. Brett, I'm going to make you go first. You've been on fire with the Friends trivia. I researched recent salaries shared for senior assistant buyers at Bloomingdale's. Oh. <laughs> there was a job senior posted. Assistant? Yeah, a senior in New York? a senior assistant buyer. That position was posted March 3rd, 2024, which is 4 days wow. ago from when we we're recording this podcast. What is that base salary, Brett? Did it say where? Oh, that's in New York, New York, buddy boy. Okay. Oh, man. Um, This is going to sound like way too much money, but I'm going to say you said senior assistant buyer? Senior assistant buyer is their job title. I'm going to go 180,000. Whoa. (laughs) I'm going to be way off, but hey, I'm going for it. Um, Or will I be? I'm going to go, I'm not going to like play the closest to game. I'll, I'll say what I really thought. I thought it was going to be more like 82,420. Oh. <laughs> you can't even live a month. 69 cents. And 69 or? cents. Yeah. Okay. And 69 cents. What'd you say? 84, 20? 82. 
82. 420. And 69 cents. I shit you not. Glassdoor.com slash salary slash Bloomingdale senior assistant manager base pay New York, New York. $75,000. You can't live in New York on that. That person lives in New Jersey. So it's, it's the whole like friends dilemma all over again. Like, how do you get the apartment? How do you eat the food? How do you drink the coffee? Yeah. Well, I'm sure it wasn't even 75,000 in the nineties. It's probably way less back then. I'm sure that person lives in Queens in a 14 by 18, whatever you call that, a, a combo apartment. Can you look up any more? I looked. No, I yeah, did look up like- a, I looked up a couple more earlier and like there is assistant buyer with Roman numeral two beside it. And that was assistant like to the assistant. That was buyer. like 63,000 nice. and Dear Lord. something else was 68,000. So this is actually one of the higher ones I found, but that's brutal. But to be fair, Brett, me and you don't even know what an assistant buyer is. Like what the hell even True. is that? I don't know. Maybe it's something you could do part time. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I just offended so many people, but all the assistant buyers just turned it off. I mean, Pat makes a lot more money than that. Pappy, no. Let without talking about how much fucking money you make. <laughs> yeah, Josh, how much money do you make, Josh? <laughs> Let's toss it out of spoilers and maybe just talk a little bit about the Patreons, and especially, Pap, the 500 episodes we have coming up. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. What do you want me to say? We love the Patreons, of course. Oh, That's yeah. That's enough. Uh, That's good. <laughs> yeah, you guys are awesome. Um, we still have some more Patreon picks coming up, and then we'll, I don't know, maybe we'll cycle it back around and give some people a second pick. Who knows? what we'll do but appreciate everyone there oh no no um almost up to 500 episodes and i think this is like basically the eight year anniversary of when we first started recording episodes so pretty crazy so appreciate everyone for that are we gonna have a special 500 episode i don't know i think so yeah it's called swords and stone or swords and shields we have to get to 500 first josh Let's not put the cart before the horse. Honestly, you know, I think no. we're just blazing through it. There's no need. I, I don't know. I don't take any episode for granted. We'll have some good ones between then and now. But that's all I had. Take it away, spoiler man. Special thank you to our patrons. Matt Troll. Our eyes are closed and we're about to cross the street. Very good. Brother Brian. Are you ready to party? Nephew Quinn. Are you ready to party? Nick. And who is this guy? The Meg. I think I know that girl. (laughs) Nurse Stacy. Oh, yeah, I definitely know her. The Wolf. Ow, ow, ow. Plus, I get to take all of you out for a lot of free dinners. Gail. You know what? I want you to take the chef job. P.K. Gandalf the wizard. Spencer. Only like the funnest guy in the world. Barky 420. Hello, didn't you read Lord of the Rings in high school? (laughs) Swole. Oh, God. Sebastian. Go out for a couple of beers and end up on a fishing boat to Nova Scotia. Dr. Lar. It's Gandalf. (laughs) Stone Cold Austin. Maybe next time then. Ruin King. I present to you our new head chef. Um, I just want to say uh, that with a pinch of excitement, a dash of hard work, and a dollop of cooperation, we can have the recipe. Are you going to kill me?
I don't. I really. I dude. I can barely remember college. <laughs> I don't know. Oh dear lord! A long time ago now. Something about you, baby. Josh, good idea. I'm glad you said something. That was fun. Yeah, it's good stuff. Josh? Thanks. Us? <laughs> All right, you guys ready for episode two? <laughs> Not tonight, no. <laughs> oh. I am I am uploaded, though. Is it all just in the same folder? Yeah, it's, it's a freaking mess, too. All right, I am going to get out of here. That was really fun, Josh. Thank you. Yeah. Good host. See you, Pat. See you, Josh. See ya. See you guys. Now. See you, Pat. Later. That was spoilers.